energies measured in calories, and thus, say the peanutted galleries, the worth of a teacher, that tangible feature, must correspondingly show in their salaries. I'm Heidi Marks Morris, and I started teaching high school in 1995. Despite nominal retirement in 2015, I've been in the classroom ever since. I'm writing a book about what I've learned in my career because I want to help others experience the connections and joy that I have found in successful teaching. It's called Teaching Matters, and you can sign up for news of it at my website, MarksTeachingMatters.com. I remember quite clearly the reaction I had the first time a student told me that he wanted to become a teacher himself. On the front, I was smiling. On the inside, I was aghast. The first thought that flashed, flashed through my mind was, are you serious? You have no idea what it takes to be a teacher. There's no way you could do this job well. And right on the heels of that first completely unsupportable, knee-jerk, judgmental reaction was this thought. Why do you want to be a teacher? You could do so much better. And by better, I suppose I meant an easier time making a lot more money. Only last week, I experienced this blithe assumption about teaching, juxtaposition, differently. And it's made me think and ponder and reflect on what money does a teacher make? Now, the what does a teacher make? I make a difference is a powerful statement and one that I accept and proudly embrace. And I've always known that as a teacher, I don't make as much as I could in other professions. And I've always accepted that because I make plenty of money to support myself, to meet my needs, to live debt free, to have enough and to spare. And stuff and things has never been my focus in life. So I've never really considered the monetary side of teaching until, as I say, last week, when I had a conversation with a former student who is herself considering becoming a teacher. And I want to share some facts, some opinions, and some observations. First, that initial reaction that I have when someone tells me he or she wants to become a teacher is, you have no idea what it takes. Which makes me consider the question, well, what does it take? Simply, it takes brains and it takes heart. Both of them in abundance. Now, by brains, I don't necessarily mean IQ, although being intelligent, having a command of the knowledge of your subject absolutely is essential. But I mean more specifically, the ability to study and learn from human behavior. Teachers are constantly engaging with other humans on a variety of levels, for a variety of purposes, with one overarching goal in mind, which is to help her students improve. The brains that are needed for that are rare, but they are developable, and they are rewarding. The heart, the heart is the compassion the desire to serve others. Even though you could make more money somewhere else, even though you've already put in your eight hours a day, now is the time that some student or some student's parents is available for that little bit of extra help. 
it never ends. And if you don't feel renewed and restored by your students, you are rapidly depleted of the energies you need to pour self into teaching. As a teacher, I pour my talent, my wit, my focus, my energy, oh, and my knowledge of my subject matter into my students with all I've got. And if that store of virtue is not replenished daily, it very rapidly is depleted entirely. And how do I refill that reservoir? Because students pour themselves into me with their talent, their wit, their energy, and one hopes their growth and progress in my subject area. And that makes teaching an exhausting but compensatorily rewarding endeavor. The paycheck makes life possible, but it certainly isn't the reason to pour into teaching. Here's the irony. When that pouring forth depletes you more than you're able to be replenished, you've got two choices. Stop pouring forth as a teacher or stop being a teacher. I made option two my choice. When I chose to retire in 2015, the reason in my own mind, as clearly as I could state it, was the balance was tipping between joy and exhaustion. As a teacher, I was always balancing between those two, but I could tell that exhaustion was going to win and I wanted to love my job, not endure it. So I left. Now, here I am teaching again, part-time, which is far less demanding, but teaching fully. I care about my students. I care about my student teacher in training. And I'm beginning to care about next school year and the possibilities that lie out there for that year. But first, let me back up a little bit and talk about my second knee-jerk reaction, that why would you want to be a teacher when you could do so much better for yourself doing anything else, almost? Well, somehow I always equated that doing so much better with a vague notion of another profession. Schooling, being a doctor, being an electrician, being a skilled tradesman, being somebody who has much more experience than I do. Well, let me share with you this conversation that I had a week ago with a former student. Her name is Brittany and I've asked her permission to share some specifics from our conversation. Now, Brittany has already graduated from college with two bachelor's degrees, one in psychology and one in Spanish. She is an intelligent, educated person, and she has some job experience as a paraeducator at another high school. She knows what joy there is in working with kids. She knows what it takes to do that day after day, and she knows what joy it brings. Looking for an opportunity to be a teacher has been something on the back of her mind, and I knew that. So, as I was seeking someone to step in to teach Spanish at Hidden Valley next year, I thought, Brittany would be an ideal fit. I know her Spanish is much better than mine. She's much younger. 
she has a passion for it, and she has a little bit of experience. I could work alongside her for her first year, like I am doing this year, help her learn the ropes, and then turn her free to soar into the skies of Spanish teaching bliss. And then I thought, this is rather like Gaston in Beauty and the Beast, gathering a wedding party and then saying smugly, perhaps I should go propose to the bride. So I thought, let me sit down and chat with Brittany. Yes, she has interest in being a teacher. I smile and nod smugly to myself. Yes, she knows that there is real joy to be found in the service of a teacher. Yes, I smile smugly. Yes, she is interested in working at Hidden Valley, her alma mater. Yes, I smile enthusiastically. But, and here is where a new world opened up to me. She is halfway through her training as a cosmetic tattoo artist. She is learning how to tattoo eyebrows specifically to enhance people's natural eyebrows as a cosmetic tattooing artist. How long does it take for this training? About four and a half months part-time. How much does it cost? Twelve and a half thousand dollars, a sum paid by her current employer, who will subsequently employ her in his shop as his cosmetic tattoo artist and share in her income as she plies her trade. How much does she make? Approximately $450 per service. A service lasts two to three hours. Here's the contrast with teaching. Granted, she already has her bachelor's degrees. First, she needs to get her master's credential, which takes up to a year and costs about $21,000. This she would, of course, pay for herself. No school districts hire employees and then pay for their training. But then she signs on to a first-year teacher's salary, wherein, in our district, I looked it up just to check, she makes $208 a day. I was astounded. A part-time tattoo artist who only does eyebrows out earns me by many times over. And she's done at the end of the day. She has no papers to grade, lessons to plan, sports to coach, clubs to manage, dances to chaperone, parent-teacher conferences to attend to. No, she has provided her service to her client or clients if it's a particularly busy day, and she's done. She is leaving her mark literally, and making her income where I am leaving my mark figuratively and hopefully and walking home with a salary of a fraction of what I could be making as a cosmetic tattoo artist. It's puzzling to me how those two positions that I would never have thought to juxtapose, both of which aim to make a mark on the future, are so starkly contrasted in terms of, strictly speaking, money. 
why would anyone choose teaching? It's a fair question. Why is teaching so poorly remunerated? Why is a service that a teacher provides, which is helping others, so much less valuable in the all-important salary than a service which is, I believe, the most specifically limited possible to mark one person at a time, particularly according to her or his instructions for their appearance. Nothing about growing as a human, blessing the future, shaping the world, all of those abstracts that inspire me as a teacher, but don't actually land in the pocketbook at the end of the day. So, she concluded in our discussion, what I would really like to do is teach part-time because the joy that comes from teaching is very valuable to me, but it doesn't pay the bills, and be a tattoo artist part-time because I'm good at it, I enjoy it, and that certainly pays the bills. It's worth thinking about. If you're going to be a teacher, do you actually feel the value in other ways than the salary? The salary is pathetic in view of the pouring forth that is required of you every day. But I have to say, the salary is completely insignificant in comparison with the joy that is poured back to you years after you quit teaching and daily as you go through the journey.